Hey guys, so today we're taking a little camping trip on our canvas. So as always, feel free to pause, rewind, just work along at your own pace. And before we get started, I'm gonna go over all of the tools that you're gonna to need today. There's a lot of paint colors and an extra brush than normal. So first of all, we're gonna need a canvas or a piece of paper to paint on. I'm using 16 by 20 today, but you can use a different shape, a different size, that's totally fine. And then for paint, we're gonna need six colors. So I've got the primary colors, yellow, blue, red, and then I've got black, brown, and white. Paint brushes, you're gonna need four. So at least three, maybe four, anyways. I've got my large brush for my background here. This one has stiffer bristles. You could use a softer bristle brush too though, if that's what you've got. And then I have my medium brush. For this one, it is um, pretty important for this technique that it has a rounded top. Does not mean you can't use a square tip brush. You certainly can. Your trees will just look a little bit different than mine, but they will still look like trees. I have done it with both brush types before. And then I need a smallish brush and a small brush. So my super tiny one, I'm gonna use my angle brush today, but any small little detail brush will work. And this one's just kind of somewhere in between my small and medium brush. And then of course I've got my jar of water here to wash out my brushes, my rag to dry them in between color changes. And that about does it. So as we work today, feel free, you can just follow along with the steps, how I'm doing them, or if you want to uh, get creative and, and kind of add your own touch to it, go right ahead. So let's get painting. We're gonna start out in our background. So grab your largest paintbrush. And I'm just gonna go into my blue. So this is a phthalo blue. And I'm just gonna grab a good amount of that on the tips of the bristles there. All right, so I'm gonna come up, my brush is dry, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit wet or if it is dry for the step, either one will work. I'm gonna come up to the top of my canvas and before I even put any paint on here, I wanna establish the direction of my brush strokes. So I'm always gonna be painting from sort of the top right down towards the left. So all my brush strokes are gonna slant kind of on this angle. So I am gonna start one right up in the corner here and I'm just gonna pull from that corner down. And then I'm just gonna kind of thicken that up. Just spread that paint a little bit lower. Kind of smooth out some of those brush strokes a little. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit more paint here and I'm gonna keep kind of working across the top. So I might come over to the middle here, throw in some more streaks. Always try to follow that exact same angle. And we want our strokes to have different lengths. So some are a little shorter, some are a little longer. All right, so that should be enough. I'm just gonna throw another little streak down here. There we go. All right, so I've just got in some, some patches of this dark blue color. And now I'm gonna switch colors. So I'm not gonna rinse out my brush because I'm still gonna use blue to mix up my next color. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna grab a little yellow and then mix that with some blue. We don't wanna see green. If you end up seeing green, that just means you have too much yellow. And you may just wanna kind of abandon ship and start that color again, because it can be a little difficult to go backwards once you hit green. 
But what we want is for that blue to start looking a little darker. And we're trying to go for a little bit of a teal. So I'm just going to test it out by taking a little bit on the tip of my finger here. And then I'm going to spread that out nice and thin on the edge of my plate. And that'll give you a nice idea of what your color looks like. And you can decide if you want to add a little more blue back into it or if you want to make a little bit more of a, more of an aqua color by adding a little more yellow. All right, and now I want to make this quite a bit brighter. So I'm going to start grabbing some white, nice big shovel of white paint. And I'm going to mix that in. And I'm not worried about it being like perfectly mixed either. I don't mind if there's a little marbling happening there. So I'm just going to take some of that on my brush. It's kind of a medium, not too light, not too dark. And I'm going to start working that up near the top still. I don't want to come any lower than sort of the top third. But in between all of these blue streaks, and definitely they can be overlapped onto the blue streaks as well. So I'm kind of filling in some of that white space. I'm still brushing on that same angle. And again, no blunt edges. So you can kind of see I'm pulling some of them shorter, some of them a little bit longer up here. That just makes blending the next layer in a lot easier. now are the edges of your canvas. We're going to go back in when we've kind of finished off the sky and we'll fill those in. It's more important to sort of get the front done while this paint is still a little bit wet. So I've got some of that dark sort of turquoise teal color now mixed in with my blue at the top. You can see, you know, patches of blue, patches of that teal color. Now as we come down our canvas, I want to gradually get a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of that teal kind of on one side of my brush and on the other side I'm going to dip that into white. And then you can give that a couple little pats sort of back and forth on the side of your plate there just to start combining it a little bit on your brush. And now I'm going to continue kind of working down. So just underneath this I'm going to start brushing up and you should see a little bit of a difference. I'm going to actually add a little more white to mine. It's not quite as light as I want it to be. I definitely want this to be brighter. There we go. So I'm still brushing on that same diagonal angle, starting to fill in any more of those little white spaces that I can see. I'm kind of brushing up into my previous colors. And now I just want to get really light from this point on. So I'm just going to continually just dip into white, 
just straight white paint. There should be enough color left in your brush. But you'll get an even lighter aqua version here. And we're going to keep working our way down, still going on that diagonal stroke. So that we get three quarters of the way down the canvas. And by that I mean you should have sort of the bottom corner. You can even just give yourself a little line across. You want to make sure that you just cross that line with these strokes. I want to make sure you don't have any white canvas showing where we don't want it later on. I want to make sure we're coming down low enough. I'm whipping this color on pretty quickly because it's not going to matter too, too much. The only thing that matters down here is that they are diagonal strokes, but they can be a bit streaky. More importantly, I just want to make sure that things are kind of blending nicely up top here. And I can do that by using a little more white. I can do that by going into some of my other colors, maybe my teal again. I can even go in with that blue again if I feel like I've lost too much of it and I could pull some of that back down. Basically what I want you to do is just spend the next few minutes, however long you need, to play with your sky and just kind of get that nice streaky feeling. Make sure you can see a good three different colors up there. You want to see blue, dark teal, and then this pale teal. The streakier, the better. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend. Always remember to keep that diagonal brush stroke going. Try and keep your streaks nice and straight on that angle. lot of fun so really just take your time if you want to keep kind of going at it just keep going at it but if it does hit a point where you're like oh I like how that looks just stop put down the brush and stop um, and when you do hit that point that you're happy with it what you're gonna want to do as I keep playing here while I'm talking I need to stop what you do want to do is paint your edges so it doesn't have to be an exact match because obviously we've got lots of different colors happening, but I would maybe take the dark blue and put that right across the top edge. And then maybe your teal about halfway down and then the lighter teal for the rest of the way, something like that, just so that you've got some color going around those sides. And that's gonna give the front a little bit of a chance to dry before we add in our next color into the sky. So. I'm going to do that on my edges here. Let's grab a little bit of that darker blue. And then some of my teal. and then just some white. So 
so that it gets a little bit lighter coming down the side here. Perfect. So again, before you do move on, make sure you're down three quarters of the way on your canvas and that it's a nice straight line across here. We don't want it to be on an angle at the bottom. Nice and straight across. Um, and before we do move on as well, we want to make sure that's completely dry. So there is going to be a little bit of a waiting period here. So if you're still working on it or you're working on those edges, go ahead and hit pause. And when everything's nice and dry, We'll keep going. All right, so by now your painting should be dry. We're gonna take that big brush, if you haven't already, and we're gonna give it a good rinse off. And then I'm really gonna try and get as much water out of those bristles as I can on my rag here. Perfect, okay. So this is sort of camping, maybe Northern Ontario in Canada. We're going to add some Northern lights in. So these are going to be these beautiful like purple streaks in our sky. So the first thing that we need to do is mix up some purple paint. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue here and I'm going to grab some red. And I would say about a 50-50 split, maybe just a slightly bit more bit of red then blue will give you a nice purple and again if you can't tell what that color is because it is pretty dark on the plate just take your finger and spread it out and it'll give you a good idea if you want to add a little bit more um, blue or red i think i need a little more red in there all right and then same thing so i want to just take what's on my brush because i don't need a lot of this color at all so just a little bit that's on my brush and I'm going to bring that over here and mix it with some white. Make sure that you like the color. I still think I want to add a touch more red in there. All right, and we want to start out with something that's kind of a medium purple. So again, not too light, not too dark. I'm going to go with that and then I'm going to bring that up into my sky here. So I'm going to just start by quickly kind of throwing a couple streaks into it. Again though, always follow your diagonal direction that you have going. I'm just going to really quickly kind of throw these in because I don't want them to dry. So I'm going to work a section at a time. So I've got this a few streaks in this one section here. I'm going to just dab my brush off on my rag, grab a little bit of white on there. And I'm just going to work back and forth, went over top of those streaks that I put in so that I can soften them. So now I've got this little purple section and I'm going to work on another one here. So back to that purple. And then I'm just going to throw in a few more little streaks. Dab off my brush and grab a little white. So I know this is a little fast paced, but we need to move fairly quickly because we don't want that paint drying. Because it is so thin, it will dry extremely fast. Which will just make it a little harder to blend. If you do find you do have issues with the blending um, because it is drying too quickly on you, slightly just wet your brush, but like just a tiny little bit, or use a little more of the uh, white paint. 
And I'm going to throw just a few little delicate bits of purple kind of up here. I don't want to overdo it though. And again, I'm just grabbing little bits of white here. Throw in a couple bright spots. It'll reactivate the paint, wet it a little bit. All right. And I'm gonna stop there. So I am finished with this large brush. I'm gonna give that one a really good rinse off. And then I'm just gonna set it out of my way. All right, so for our next step, um, we're actually gonna kind of make this floating fire pit. So down in this section here, is where our little campfire is going to be. So we're going to pick up our medium paint brushes. And then we're going to create this kind of golden um, brown color. So basically I'm going to take this brush, grab some yellow, a scoop of yellow, and I'm going to mix that into a bit of brown. You won't need a lot of this. So a little yellow, a little brown, and then I want to take a nice scoop of white and mix that in as well. We want this to be a fairly light color. Mine looks a little bit sandy still, so I'm going to put a little more yellow in. I want it a little more golden. All right, and then I'm just gonna take a bit of that, swipe it off my brush here, and I'm gonna create the shape of my fire pit. So basically, it's just gonna be starting kind of right at the base of where your sky ends here, so about a quarter of the way up the canvas. And I'm just gonna make a little straight line across. And then each side, I'm gonna angle it out a little bit. Out, out. And these edges don't need to be perfect or pretty at all. You won't even see the edges when we're done. And then I'm going to make a smile to kind of join those up. So it's almost down at the bottom of the canvas. And then I want to start to fill that in. But as I fill it in, I'm just going to be very, very messy. So I'm kind of going in a, a circular brushstroke motion a little bit but really quick, messy, I've left out spots because I want to add texture in here. So to do the texture, I'm going to grab a little white and I'm just going to kind of streak that in a little bit. Again, kind of keeping that circular motion. And then I'm going to wipe off my brush and grab a little bit of brown just straight brown and I'm going to throw just a couple or a few streaks of that in. And then finally I'm going to do the same thing with a little bit of yellow. All right, so we sort of have this mess. It almost looks a little bit like a bird's nest. I am going to just slightly smooth that out. So just quick, short little brush strokes following that circular motion. We don't want to turn this into one solid color. We're just slightly softening some of those, those, um, those colors and those mixtures. And if there's anything that sort of disappeared, like if you want to add a little more brown or you want to add a little more white in there for some brighter spots, You can do that. Just look for texture. We don't want it one solid color. But your paint should be still thin. If you've got blobs on there, you're definitely gonna wanna use your brush and just smooth those out so that it's gonna dry nice and fast for us. All right, so there's my fire pit. I am gonna let that dry for a little bit. And I'm gonna come over and work on my tent. So before we do that, we just wanna make sure that this area in here 
is dry. So if you can do this, you're safe. And because it is thin, it, it should be dry by now. It does dry really quickly. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and dry it off. All right, so for this tent, we're gonna create this sort of triangular shape. Um, and we wanna make this almost like a, an orangey red color. So I'm gonna take a nice big scoop of yellow here and then I'm gonna mix that with some red. And what I want is for that red to just kind of start to turn a little bit orange here. Shouldn't look red anymore. A very, very dark orange. Just keep adding yellow if you need to. And then because I don't want it to be super bright either, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to this color. Just a little bit at a time to kind of make it a little bit duller. Almost a rusty color. And then finally, I wanna put just a little hint of white into that. I don't want it to be light, but I want a little white in there because I want it to be a bit opaque. I don't want to see the background coming through. All right. I'm just going to wipe some of that off my brush here because I don't need quite that much on there. If you can get your bristles a little bit flat, that's gonna give you a nice control for making these lines. And I'm actually gonna switch brushes, I think. I'm gonna to switch to my, I call it the smallish brush. If you don't have one like this, use your smallest brush. That'll work as well. So I've got that color loaded on there. And I'm just gonna come up and sketch in my tent. So I wanna start with the opening of the tent, which is gonna be a triangle. So it's gonna start up in the sky here, overlapping it, and it's gonna end down right beside my fire pit here. So I'm just gonna make the middle of my tent somewhere right about here, and then I'm gonna draw a line down. And if you're worried about sort of that shakiness kicking in with your, with your hands, go pretty quick. The faster that you draw, the steadier your line will actually turn out. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I have this triangle, and I might bring this side just a little bit longer than the first side. And now we need to do the side of our tent. So for the roof, I'm gonna decide where I want it to end. I wanna fit my tent onto the canvas. You might have it just so that it goes right off the side, and that's okay as well. Just depends on where you have it placed. But I'm gonna fit, put the end of mine right in here. So I wanna be a little lower. Oops, we'll cover that later. I'm gonna be a little lower, right about there. And I'm just gonna draw a line that connects those two. And then I'm just gonna let that angle down slightly. And come across the bottom here. So there's the shape of our tent. The next thing we wanna do is start to fill that in. So I'm gonna work on the side first. I'm not gonna use this small brush because that'll take all day. So I'll clean that one off. And come back to the medium brush here. And with these brush strokes, we just wanna follow this angle here. So the angle of this line, always kind of going up and down on that angle. And thicken up those edges if you need to before you fill it in, just so you don't go outside of the lines.
All right, we'll get that all filled in. Kind of smooth out those brush strokes just a little bit. And we are gonna shade this a little bit as well. So um, we're gonna work on that next. So up here, I want this to be a little bit darker at the top and a little bit brighter down at the bottom. So for the top here, I'm just gonna grab like a little bit of brown and a tiny, tiny little bit of black. And I'm gonna smush those together on my brush. And then I'm gonna sort of swipe off the excess again Grab a little bit of that orange that I had earlier. So I've kind of got this dark brown on one side and the orange on the other side. And then I'm just gonna use that and swipe down from the top of my tent. Kind of a combination of those brown and orange colors. Still going on that same angle. And again, if you want to make a nice line at the top to start, you can kind of go across and then keep pulling down from there. You don't want to have a lot of paint on your brush. And you don't want to stop with a blunt edge. So these should all kind of be coming down at different lengths. Don't worry about blending those in. I'm gonna grab even a small, just tiny bit of straight black. And I mean like the smallest little bit of black. And I'm just gonna add that in kind of at the top here in a few little spots. Doesn't need to be everywhere, but just to have some nice darker spots. We just want lots of variation of color up in here. and then give your brush a nice rinse. And you may not need to, but if you feel like you need to blend that a little bit better at the bottom there, you can go ahead and just grab a little bit of that orange again and pull it up. So from the bottom, up. And don't go too, too many times over and over and over again because you don't want to pull that dark color too much down into the bottom. And when the paint is still wet like that, it will happen a little bit. So we've got this brighter bottom and this darker top on our tent. Perfect, so we're gonna leave this edge just as it is for now. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna work on the inside of the tent, which is just gonna be solid black. So I'm gonna take my brush, you could rinse it off first, but probably don't really need to because black will just cover up anything anyways. So I'm just grabbing some black on this brush. Again, we still want the paint thin, so swipe off the excess. We don't want too, too much paint on there. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna fill in this inner triangle. So I wanna make sure I leave that orange line showing. I'm going right down beside it. And then I'm just sort of making that edge nice and defined. And then everything in between, we're gonna fill that in.
and black really doesn't show brush strokes very well, but you do want to kind of make sure you again following the angles. So on this side, we're following the diagonal this way. In the middle, it's pretty straight. And then on the left side, we're following that left diagonal line. That'll matter a little bit more on this next step. So I am going to put a little tiny bit of a highlight inside that. All I'm going to do for that is grab like a tiny little bit of white on my brush. I did not clean it first. <laughs> and then especially on the left half, I'm not worrying too much about the right, but the left half of this triangle, I want to throw in a little bit of this gray kind of highlight. So I'm just going to start going up and down in the middle, and down the left side, and then just following that angle. And I'm not going to go over it too many times because I don't want to make it a solid color. I want to see that little bit of streakiness in there. So the, the right side is nice and black. The left side has that little bit of dark gray streak running through it. All right, and now we're just going to let that dry a little bit. And uh, while that's happening, we're going to, um, actually we're going to come back and work on our fire pit. So make sure that this area is dry. It, um, if it's not, just wait a little bit longer or shoot it with your hair dryer. Uh, we're going to work on getting the fire in the middle. It's going to be a few, a few layers to get that nice and bright. So I'm going to rinse my medium brush off, set that one down, and I'm going back to that smallish brush. And I'm just gonna use white to start. So I wanna get the shape of my fire right in here. And the white is gonna give me a really nice bright background so that my yellows and my oranges will be really vibrant. If I were to just put them straight over the brown, they wouldn't be quite as bright. So a little white on the tip of my brush. And then I'm gonna come up to my fire pit here. So kind of in the, just underneath halfway, I'm going to make another little smile right inside there. And you can shape your flames however you want. I just sort of make little um, flicks coming off the side. So I start it with my main shape, which I'm going to kind of have coming rounded on the sides. And then get a little bit narrower near the top. Kind of like a big chocolate chip. And then I just throw these little flicks off the side. So I might have one right there. And you'll get a better idea of it when you fill it in. So we're just going to color that in with the white. Nice thin layer. And you can always make small little changes to that um, later on when we add our color in, but that's just going to be sort of your basic shape there. So now we're going to come up and we're going to add some big trees in behind our tent and some trees up in this area here. So until we get our ground in, they will be floating, um, but all I need you to remember is to come down as far as your sky. Don't stop your tree up here because it will look like it's floating. We want to come right down to where that blue sky ends. So take that small brush, give it a rinse. And I'm going to come back to my medium brush. So basically for these pine trees, uh, you can, if you want, use your small brush and create a little line for a trunk depends on um, comfort level. If you feel comfortable about going straight down without that, you don't need it. Um, but if you'd rather, just take a little brush, put a little straight line in, kind of where you want to put your trees. You can go one at a time or you can mark them all in. 
and you can use that as a guideline. So I will do one that way to show you and the rest of them I'll do without a line just so you can see the difference. So I'm actually going to start um, with some gray trees. So I just want to quickly, before I do that, mix up some gray. So I need some white and black and I'm just going to mix those together. And I want a medium gray, not too light, not too dark. These ones are just a little bit further off in the distance. That's why they're slightly lighter color. And then they're going to get blacker as they get closer to us. All right, so I've got a little bit of that gray made up. And I'm really making sure that my bristles are flat. I'm kind of pressing them against the plate and swiping. So they're nice and flat. There isn't too much paint on there. And I did say I was going to do a line. So I'm going to grab a little bit on my small brush here too. And I'm going to start right over my tent with a gray tree. So I'm going to put one just right in here. I'm going to not, he's not going to be very tall. So I'm going to start him about here and I'm just going to make this quick little line right down to my tent there. So that will be sort of the trunk, which you probably won't even see in the end, but it, it will give you a little guideline so you know where you're going and your tree doesn't end up crooked. So at the top of that, I'm just going to leave that little um, area sticking up there and I'm going to start just below that and I'm just going to press my, the tips of my bristles right across that so I get a little almost eyebrow shape. And then I'm just going to kind of start working my way back and forth across the tree, sort of doing these little dabs to the left, to the right, maybe across the middle, left, middle, to the right. The biggest thing is you want to go pretty quick. Don't worry about blobby, um, blobby dabs, technical paint term. <laughs> that is totally fine. They don't need to be super delicate. So I'm just kind of going to work across. The other thing is don't make your trees, if you can help it, try and shut off your brain and don't make them symmetrical. Meaning you don't want them to look the exact same on either side. They'll be much more natural if there's a little bit of an unevenness to them. And you can always go back in and fill it in a little bit more. But ideally what you want to see happening is that it's narrower at the top and as you come down it's going to get a little bit wider. So we'll do that again. And I'm going to do this next one without a trunk just to show you the difference. I did not make quite enough gray, so I'm just going to grab a little more here. All right, so for this tree, I'm going to make it a little shorter and it's going to go just kind of above my fire pit right in this area here. So I'll start at the top with a tiny little vertical line, just a quick little mark on the canvas. And then I'll flip my brush over. And again, I'm just going to kind of start working back and forth. Doing these little dabs, kind of smudges. Very, very messy. And this is one of those things too, if, if it's not going quite how you want it to, practice on a piece of paper or something until you kind of get the technique down a little bit. So this one I'm making sure it comes right down to where my sky ends. And then I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to do two more trees on this side and two more trees on this side. And I'm going to make these ones both just straight black. And I am lazy, so I don't wash my brush off, but I'm just kind of blobbing it into the black paint, swiping it off again to get those bristles nice and flat. And then totally up to you. If you like using the trunk, I'm going to make this a nice big tall guy. You can definitely draw that in and then work your way down. Try to avoid your handle coming up like this. If you can keep it pointing down a little bit, that'll really help with these little dabs and getting the shape of your tree. 
And some of these branches, we don't want them to be like coming straight back and forth. So I kind of tilt them up a little bit. And not every branch is the same shape, of course. You can see they're getting a little wider now as I work my way down. And you never need a ton of paint on your brush, but just add more as you start to run out. All right, down to hit that tent there. And then I want to have one more little tree in here, which obviously some of it's going to come off the edge of my canvas. So you can put in a trunk right near the edge if you want, or we can just pretend that it's there. Make sure I cover up that little mistake I made earlier. There we go. The nice thing with acrylic paint, if you do make mistakes, you can always cover them up. So down in this area here, I want my tree to make sure it comes down. Again, my sky ended down here. So I'm gonna make sure my tree comes down to there. And all I'm gonna do is kind of just keep dabbing in some black in here so that it looks like that tree is continuing in and behind the tent. And then I'm gonna put two more trees in this area. So I'm gonna put one that's a little taller and then one that's a little taller yet. And if you love these trees and you wanna do more, you can. If you're not loving the trees so much and you want to do less, totally fine as well. These are one of my favorite things to paint though. I just love, I love the asymmetrical feeling and I love how such a messy technique actually just creates something so natural looking. Okay to overlap your previous trees. And my trees tend to stay fairly skinny, even though they do get wider at the bottom, they do tend to stay fairly thin throughout the whole thing. I, I try to avoid that really triangular Christmas tree look, but everybody will have their own sort of tree style. So you just sort of embrace what you like. All right, that is gonna cover those trees. So 
Um, let's see, next I'm going to come back down to my fire here because it has dried off and so has my tent. So we'll work on these two areas. So you can rinse off your medium brush for now and dry it off and just set it aside. So we're going to come back to smallish brush and we're going to start to fill in this fire a little bit. So what I want to do is mix a little white and a little yellow. I still want a nice bright lemony yellow, so not we're not going like as light as butter. A nice bright lemony yellow. And then I'm just gonna go right over top of that white shape that I did. And if I want to kind of adjust it a little bit, you can do that now. We're just gonna fill it all in with that yellow color. And because we have that nice white background, it should be a nice vibrant bright yellow. All right, and then we're going to come over to our tent. So the color that we mixed up for this little um, fire pit here, that kind of golden brownish color, we're going to use that again. So if you did run out of it or it has dried up on your plate, I will uh, kind of go over how we mixed it. It was brown with some yellow mixed in, quite a bit of yellow, and then some white. So I'm gonna wet my brush a little bit and mix that into my paint, just a couple drops here. It's gonna help my line go on much smoother. And then if you just sort of twirl your brush in the paint, it'll load on a nice amount, you won't have too much, and it'll keep your bristles all together for you a little bit better. So we're gonna sort of make the poles right now that are holding our tent up. So we're gonna see um, one on each side of the triangle and one right down the middle. So I'm gonna do the ones on the edge first. And I'm just gonna go right inside the orange here. So I'm going over top of black paint, just on the inside edge of that orange. And I'm just gonna bring that all the way down. Make sure that it shows up. If it's really dark and you can't see it, then you probably need to add a little more white to the paint. All the way down. And if you feel like maybe it was a little too thick or anything like that, just fix it from the black side. You can always grab a little tiny bit of that black paint and clean up that inside edge if you need to. And I'm going to do the same thing down the other side here. So I'm just recreating that triangle that we drew in the beginning. And you can do like little sketchy lines if doing a solid line is too hard, if it's, you get too shaky, just do little sketchy lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be solid. Anytime that you're painting, you're kind of just making a suggestion on the canvas and people's brains do the rest to fill in, sort of, so they know what it is. It, it doesn't need to be exact on the canvas. And right down the center, I'm going to create a post. So I'm going to use my finger just to mark the middle of the bottom of my tent here. And then I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to aim right down to my finger. And again, you can do one quick line or you can just sketch all the way down. And if you feel like your line gets too thick or you just don't like the line, black is a great corrector.
All right, so one other thing that we're just gonna add a touch of into is our, on our tent here is a highlight. So I'm gonna go back to my medium brush. And I don't wanna use just straight white because it'll be a little bit too harsh, too, a little too bright. So I'm actually gonna use like a little bit of white and a little bit of that color I just used for the tent posts. So I'm just gonna have a tiny little bit of that on the brush. Really, really wipe it off. You can even dab it on your rag. The less you have on there, the better. And then I'm just gonna kind of come in here and I'm just gonna do a quick little diagonal line, a couple little um, vertical lines. So this will just sort of give your, your tent a little bit more movement, a little bit more of, you know, the material might have a wrinkle here or a crease, or maybe it's blowing in the breeze a little bit. Go ahead and rinse that brush off. All right, so down here again, back to our little fire pit. So we're gonna finish the flames on our fire. So we'll go back to that smallish brush. And I'm gonna use a color similar to my tent, only I want it to be a little bit more vibrant. So I'm not gonna add the brown this time. So I'm gonna grab a little red here and a bit of yellow. And I'm just gonna find somewhere to mix those together here. Get myself a nice vibrant orange. And then we'll just come up and we're gonna start adding little bits of that into our fire. So just little like licks of the flame. Kind of little flicks with your brush. Don't forget to kind of bring it out on some of those edges as well. We don't necessarily want to have all the orange inside and a yellow outline around the flames. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of red and just kind of go in with little shots of red too, especially inside those orange areas. You can always go in with yellow again. And when you do go in with the yellow, sometimes it'll pick up some of those um, wet paint colors, the oranges and the reds, and you'll get this like even lighter version of an orange in there. So you'll end up with lots of different shades of yellows, orange, a little bit of yellow and white will give you some brighter spots. Again, this is one of those things on here that you can kind of just play with a little bit, but don't overdo it so that you end up with a solid color. We don't want a solid color again. We want lots and lots of shades in there. All right. So around our fire pit, we're gonna put some rocks, some like nice big um, black and gray rocks right around the base of that fire. So for this, I'm gonna switch over to my smallest brush, not the smallish, the very, very small brush. And I'm gonna go in to start with a nice dark, dark gray. So not quite black, but 
but nice dark charcoal gray. And then I'm just gonna create these little rock shapes. So they don't have to be like circles, they can be a little bit bumpy. But almost these little miniature boulders kind of all around the base of your fire. And it doesn't matter how many you end up with, you might have four, five, six, seven. I like to put two little partial rocks kind of on the end. So I've just got them outlined there. And then we're gonna fill them all in. And I just do sort of a quick dabbing to kind of fill them in. And it doesn't even need to be perfect because we're gonna add some other colors into there. I'm gonna grab a touch of white, tap the excess off. And then just sort of dab that into those rocks as well. And that's gonna give them a little bit more uh, definition so you'll see different rocks. And some highlights, some low lights. And again, try not to forget the edges. We don't necessarily just want these light dabs inside and these dark, dark outlines on the rocks. And that'll give you all different shades of gray, some white, Lots of texture in those rocks. All right, we're getting through this. So we've got some grass that we need to throw in, and then we're gonna put a couple of logs on the fire pit, and a couple birds in the sky and some stars. So the next thing that we're gonna do is our grass, which I'm gonna use my medium brush for. And we're gonna need to mix up some green. So. Basically what we wanna do is find some yellow here. Mix some blue with that. And I'm gonna sort of say a 50-50 mix here, yellow and blue. You should get a nice, fairly dark emerald green happen. And then I'm gonna take like a pretty good sized chunk of brown and you're gonna mix that right in. So what you wanna see happen is that that green is gonna get much, much duller, almost more of a khaki green or an olive green. I like to call it G.I. Joe green. All right, so it's pretty dark, which is what we want. And again, if you're not quite sure of your color, just sort of spread some out on the edge of your plate and you'll get a better idea. Take the excess off the brush. And I'm gonna just start sort of, doing, again, kind of that dab smudge technique in the grass here. I want a lot of texture and I'm not 100% filling in this area down here. I wanna fill it in probably about 80% full. So what I'm gonna do is right up to the bottom of my trees, I'm just gonna kind of, especially over in this area, I'm gonna be a little more careful. Kind of get down the side of that tent there. And now underneath, I'm just sort of doing these quick little strokes. I'll do some up here, it'll be easier to see. Quick little strokes in all different directions. Now these are very sparse, we're gonna put a lot more in than that. But just to give you an idea, I'm just gonna kind of mess up the bottom of the tent here. I don't want that line to be so perfect and straight. So I'm just gonna kind of let this green, sort of mess that up. Same thing along the front here. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep filling this in. And like I said, about 80% full. You can leave some white peeking through. Don't 
don't think too hard, just blob it on. Same thing around the fire pit, those edges. We're gonna mess those up a little bit. And then same thing along the top of your grass line, the odd little kind of pull up along the top there. I can even do those little pull up strokes around the tent here. Just to get the effect that there is some blades of grass peeking up. Careful around the edge of your tent here. All right. So again, we are gonna wrap these edges, but before we do that, um, I wanna make sure we finish off this grass while that paint is still a bit wet. So to add even more texture and to fill in all of these little white areas that we've left, I'm gonna rinse out that brush. Give it a little dry. And then I'm just going straight in with some yellow paint. And I'm basically just kind of going over top of my green here. So I'm just gonna start doing all these little strokes again. I'm not paying too much attention as I go. I'm just going right over top, but I am making sure that as I go, it does get filled in. I don't wanna see white canvas anymore. And you'll see sort of that yellow and the green start to mix together. But you do want to see some of these bright yellow highlights throughout it. So anytime you sort of start running out of those, it just looks green, grab more yellow paint and keep going. And then, yeah, again, you can do those little pull-up strokes right at the bottom of your tent there. Maybe a few up in the grass line below those trees. And then just have a look, make sure you've, you've filled in pretty much all of that white little bits here and there won't be a big deal. We just don't wanna see a lot of white canvas showing through. All right, and then we can also th throw just a little tiny bit of brown in through the grass as well. I wouldn't go too much with it, um, but you can take your brush, kind of grab some of that brown, swipe off the excess, and then just sort of little bits here and there. Again, it's just throwing in a little bit more texture and dimension into your grass. You can always go back in with more green or more yellow after too, if you feel like one color sort of needs to come out a little bit more. But the main goal here is just lots of texture. And when you're happy with how that grass looks, we're just gonna take some of this color, so kind of some of that green, maybe mix a bit of yellow in with it. Anything in that range. And we're just gonna sort of start getting those edges painted in on both sides. 
And then you're also going to want to lift up your canvas and paint right across that bottom edge as well. And that will just finish off the frame on your entire canvas. Perfect. All right. A couple of steps left. So down beside our fire pit here, I'm going to throw in a couple of logs just so that we could sit on them and roast marshmallows while you're camping. So I'm going to take my smallish brush and I want to make more of this really dark brown um, color. So I'm going to take a little bit of black again and I'm just going to mix that into some brown. Think dark chocolate. Nice, rich, hot fudge sauce. Something like that. All right. And then I'm going to take this dark brown and I'm going to create the shape of two logs, basically. So one is going to come down this way and one is going to come down this way. So right beside the fire here, I'm going to make one line diagonal in there and I'm going to make a small little curved line at the top. Just really, really tiny, like an eyebrow. And now I want my log to be a little bit wider at the bottom here, so I'm just going to come down but let that line get a little bit further away. I always adjust the first line too. So it's a touch wider at the bottom because that's closer to us. So it's a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna put sort of a smile on the bottom there. And then I wanna do a similar shape on the other side. They're just logs, they do not need to be the same. And they can be a little bit bumpy too, so don't worry if they, you know you don't need to have straight, perfect lines there. And then we're just going to fill them in. Nice thin coat of paint here. Get nice coverage so you don't see that background showing through, but thin paint so that it's going to dry nice and fast. So we want to make these have a little bit more texture and we want to show um, the ends of the logs that we can see, those front, front ends there where it's been cut. So for that I'm going to take a little bit of this color again, so I'm rinsing up my brush, grabbing a little of that golden brown. You want to make sure it's a lot lighter than your logs so that it shows up. And then I'm just going to create this round circle, kind of oval right at the end of my log. And then I'm just going to kind of spiral in. It doesn't need to be totally filled in. Just give it a spiral. Same thing on the side, an oval. And then I'm just going to kind of spiral inside. So it's like there's rings in the wood. And then I want to add a little bit of texture to that bark. So same color, but all I'm going to do is just kind of tap off my brush so that there isn't very much of it on it. And then I'm just going to create these kind of long streaks down my log. And 
There's a fine line between having too much paint and not having enough paint. <laughs> so yeah, these lines, they don't need to be straight. Some can be kind of straight. Some can have a little wave to them. But just throw a few of those in. They are subtle. And then I'm going to do something very similar, but with black. So a little bit of that black paint on my brush. Again, I'm not even bothering to clean my brush. And I'm just going to put a little bit of black in there. Just not as much, just a couple, a couple dark spots in that wood. And now I am rinsing it off. And I'm going to grab a tiny little bit of white just for a couple like brighter spots in that wood. If you feel like they're too bright, just go over top of them with a little bit of your, your brown there. You can soften them. But don't be afraid of contrast. All right, that looks so inviting. Now I just need to go camping. <laughs> All right, so the very last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come up into the sky. I'm gonna put a couple little birds maybe flying up there. So I'm gonna take my smallest little brush, grab a little bit of black paint, and I really wanna make sure that I'm swiping the excess. You do not wanna have a blob of paint on your brush for this step. And I'm going to put mine down in here. So I'm just going to put a little M and a little V. Two little birds flying. And the last thing that I want to add in are just a few little twinkling stars right up at the top. So I'm still going to use my small brush, but I'm not going to use the bristles. I'm actually going to use the handle of my brush. So I'm going to take that handle and I'm just going to dip it into white. And then when I come up to my canvas, I'm just going to very lightly dab. And you can do like two or three stars before you need to dab again. And I sort of like to just keep them up near the top of my painting, but that doesn't mean you have to. You could bring them all down through the sky if you wanted to. And then just do as many as you want. All right. So just sort of have a look over everything. Make sure that you're happy. I didn't like that I could see my tent through down here through the grass. So I'm just adding a little bit of white to some of that grass color. And then I'm just going to kind of blend that in by tapping a little bit down here. Perfect. All right, we are finished. The only thing, of course, left to do is sign that painting. So I'm just going to slide mine up a little bit. And I think I made it fall off my easel again. I'm very good at that. There we go. Slide it up onto the top here. I'm gonna grab my small brush. I always like to add a little bit of water to the paint when I'm signing. Just makes it a little bit easier to flow. And there we go. So I hope that you enjoyed your, your little mini camping trip today. Uh, this is a really fun painting. I love this one. And like I said, it almost makes me want to go camping. And that's it. Until next time, we will see you guys later. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.